Hello again guys and welcome to another episode of Optics Trade Debates. My name is Tadej. Hello, my name is Theodor. And today we'll be discussing the category of rifle scopes. Uh, as, uh, as you can see we have here quite some rifle scopes which are different in length and all other properties. Uh, but basically these are all the middle mill tactical rifle scopes. Mm -hmm. uh, Theodor here will help me to elaborate on the basic features of these types of rifle scopes. Yeah, well... <clears throat> As you probably know, on our webpage you can find mill mill uh, rifle scopes category, and all of these scopes are in this category. So we get questions: What does it mean? Basically, a mill mill scope has the following features: It has the reticle in the first focal plane. So that means that when you change the magnification, the reticle grows or shrinks when you change the magnification. So first focal plane reticles. Then all of them have tactical open turrets. So turrets which you can always just turn around and they have no cap on them and they are of tactical style. The third feature which is the most important is that reticle in the first focal plane usually has holdover lines or holdover points uh, which are in, in mills. So the reticle subtensions are in mils, and that means that between two lines it's either 5 mils or 0 0.5 mils or 0 0.11 mil and so on. So all the reticle subtensions are measured in mils. So this is the first mil in this mil mil yeah. word of the uh, name of the category. The second mil means that the turret clicks are also in mils. That means that the reticle subtensions and turret clicks are matched. They're both in mils. That means that you always have the same number of clicks between any number of lines. So that means if you have, let's say, 0 0.1 mil or 1 mil of uh, reticle subtensions between one line and another line, it means that there is 10 clicks in between. And that means when you shoot on a target on any given distance and you see you hit the target 1 mil too low, you just move it for 10 clicks and the next shot will be in the center. Mm -hmm. So that means that the turret clicks and the reticle subtensions are matched and because the reticle is, the is in the first focal plane, they will be matched at any magnification. So no matter how you will change the magnification, the reticle subtensions and the clicks will always be matched. This okay. is what defines mil yes. mil. Okay, this so is so about so. the basic features. Uh, what about for which type of use these rifle scopes are usually used for, or which customers usually go for these rifle scopes? Well, it's like this. This is a subcategory of tactical rifle scopes. So, tactical rifle scopes are all rifle scopes with tactical turrets. However, we could also just basically say instead of mil mil rifle scopes, we could say truly. Tactical rifle scopes or, or real tactical rifle scope mm -hmm. because everything else it just it will fail in the field uh, in in terms of performance against mil mil tactical rifle scopes. Um, so I would say for the type of use it's it's for tactical applications. Tactical that means for tactical long range shooting, also for tactical CQB shooting if you have a lower magnification wide angle mil mil scope. It's meant for truly tactical application. You can, you can use reticles in this kind of um, scopes for uh, distance estimations, for holdovers, so you can know that you have a bullet drop of uh, I don't know, so much and so much mils for, for a given distance, and you can either click or you can do, you just uh, shift the aiming point to, to another holdover line and then just uh, correct the, the bullet drop through the reticle and it will work at all magnifications. This is the, the charm of the uh, first focal plane reticles. So I would say this is for really truly tactical use because these are the only scopes that can really be used in tactical applications which can be used for distance estimations, for bullet drop compensations, um, for everything. Mm -hmm. Well, I can see that all of those rifle scopes here are, of course, of mil mil tactical mm -hmm. rifle scopes, but I can see they feature quite different lens diameters. I can mm -hmm. see this one is 65, also this one is 65, 24, and so on. 56, 56. 56, sorry, 56, 56, 56, 56, 56 50, 50, 50, yes, 44. 44. 
30. Uh, what's the case with the lens diameter and the magnification range? It's not really that important. You can find wide angle scopes with, uh, with really small magnification, uh, small lens diameter, so with the 24 or, or 30, like this model. Uh, and with low magnif uh, magnification range, this one is 1 to 8. Mm -hmm. uh, so you also get millimeter scopes 1 to 6 and so on, so on or even 1 to 4. So for uh, CQB, close quarter battle applications. Then you have, uh, I would say, medium range uh, rifle scopes with a, usually with a 50 millimeter objective lens. Like this one is 3.5 to 18. Or this one is 3 to 15 by 44, mm -hmm. a really perfect scope from uh, Vortex PST Gen 2. Mm -hmm. um, then you have the, the big models with a 56 millimeter objective lens and a little bit higher magnification, all the way to 24, 30, this one is 16, that one is 20. So it doesn't really matter. The mil mil um, is defined by the reticle position in the first upper plane and matched clicks and reticle subtensions in mills. Mm -hmm. This is this is the basic um, the basic criteria that one scope is listed into a mill mill category. The lens diameter and the magnification range is not of such importance. It is true, however, that there are, that mill mill scopes in in a wide angle category are really rare. The same way as mill mill scopes with magnification higher than thirty. Are rare because in usually in tactical applications you don't need magnification over 20 even 20 is already too much in, in more than enough I would say not too much more than enough in most cases and because the reticles are in the first upper plane that means if you have really extreme zooms let's say like Schmidt and Bender they have a model 5 to 45 mm <coughs> the reticle gets really really thin on lower magnification and gets quite thick on high magnification so because of this reason, I would say a normal four time or six time zoom is it's the most appropriate one. And all magnifications above 24 are already more than enough. Mm -hmm. So in this category of scopes, I would say magnifications between 3 and 24, those magnifications are the most usable. You can normally get scopes with a higher uh, magnification range or lower, but they are um, a little, bit, a little bit more rare. Mm, I can see the overall physical appearance of these rifle scopes uh, basically quite varies mm -hmm. uh, differentiates, uh, but I can take it, I think it uh, basically what's important is that they are robust looking. Mm -hmm. um, as we can see, this one is not so big because it's a wide angle rifle scope. Uh, rifle scope. This one is quite long. What are yeah, the weights? So they are probably quite heavy. They are quite heavy, heavy because of most of these scopes they have 34 millimeter central tube. Mm -hmm. Some of them even have 40 millimeter central tube and the reason behind it is that these scopes are used quite common for long-range shooting because let's be honest for really extreme long-range shooting these are the only group of scopes that is really usable for that kind of purpose and for long-range shooting you need a really big elevation range so there has to be a really a, lot, a big number of clicks inside and to achieve this you need a bigger uh, central tube diameter. So I would say in physical appearance majority of mil mil scopes are quite bulky because they have <coughs> they have uh, I would say quite thick uh, yeah, central yeah. tube. Yeah, the central diameter is at least uh, 34 and it goes all the way up to 40. Normally a little bit cheaper scopes also feature 30 millimeter uh, central tube uh, but then you lose a little bit of uh, elevation range. Mm -hmm. on them. What about the reticle? You already mentioned that uh, in most cases, so these rifle scopes are in the first focal reticles. Are in the first Not focal in plane? In all cases. In all cases. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, in the first focal plane, and also the reticles are designed with the uh, hash drop hole over lines. In the past, mil dot was the most common reticle mm -hmm. for for mil mil scopes. That means every uh, every uh, every mil you had a dot, which was uh, 0.2 mm -hmm. nodes big. But this was in the past, the, the modern reticles, they feature usually, we say, a Christmas tree under the center point, a lot of holding points left and right to correct the windage and the drop. And they usually feature really, really nice, thin 
hold over lines. Also, with, uh, they feature sometimes a scale. Uh, MSR reticle is the most common like this, which has a horizontal and vertical scale for easier um, distance estimations. And the scales in, in such raposcopes even have a subtension divided in uh, 0 0.1 mil, that means one click. So that you're really able to precisely uh, determine what is the distance to, a, to an object which you're uh, to an object which you're observing and for which you know its height. You also mentioned the um, the elevation and windage adjustment, so it's very important for these rotoscopes to have the turn indicator on the turrets. Those which have a yeah, those which have a really big elevation range, it's important. Mm -hmm. Let's say this one has an elevation range of I think 36 or 35 mils. So in the first uh, first turn, you go all the way up to to 14 mils, and then when you go into 15th mil and then above, you see a turn indicator which pops out and then you go all the way to 26. The internal elevation is even bigger than the elevation of the turret. Uh, we have a separate video about turn indicators, we also have a separate video about uh, elevation range, about how much uh, of elevation per turn on one turret, how this is defined in different scopes. Um, and yes, for mil mil scopes, which are meant for really truly tactical applications, most of the turrets have some kind of turn indicator because the elevation range in them is quite big. Mm -hmm. uh, lastly, the most important questions for some, the mm -hmm. price in these rifoscopes. Well, these rifoscopes in mil mil category usually come with all the whistles and bells and everything what you can imagine. I would say the reticle illumination, even though it's not a must, we have some uh, scopes listed in this category without reticle illumination, but 99% of all of them do feature reticle illumination. They also feature locking functions for the turrets and everything. So the bottom point is, the bottom line is, they're usually very expensive. Uh, it is changing, however, more and more affordable scopes also come into this category because the, the producers, they figured out that mil mil scopes are really popular because they, they give you such a big advantage in use, in tactical use. Uh, and this means that in the future and already today we see a lot bigger number of affordable mil mil scopes than a couple of years before. Um, I also think that this type of shooting, let's be honest, with mil mil scopes you mostly do shooting on targets on, on unknown distances and where only one shot or two shots count and then you have to change the, the range and different, different targets and so on. These scopes are not meant to, to make a one centimeter group on 500 meters. Yeah. Target F class scopes are meant for that purpose. But these scopes, mil mil scopes, are meant for shooting on, on distances which you don't know exactly. So you have a target but you don't know the exact distance to it. So you have to determine the distance through ranging through the reticle. And then the set of features of mil mil scopes gives you the ability that the the probability of first hit, one shot first hit, is the highest, the highest possible. Mm. So, and this costs money, so most of these scopes are quite expensive. Well, I know uh, that quite some of our customers um, apply to our, reply to our emails that uh, they would wish to have a mil mil tactical rifle scopes, but are not willing to part with 2000 euros. I think like rifle scopes like this Viper PST is a this is the prime, prime example. Prime, prime example. You get everything what you need. You get really for this. I would say this is around one thousand one hundred euros yeah, or something like that. You get a perfect optics, mm -hmm. perfect optical performance. I'm amazed every time when I look through them. Uh, and you get mil mil configurations, nice third clicks, zero stop, and so on. So this is changing. Mm -hmm. I would say, and I think in the future. We will also see scopes similar and normally the optical performance will be degraded when you go down uh, with the price. But I think that uh, we will see mil mil scopes even for 500, 600, maybe 700 euros in the, in the future mm -hmm. because it's a really popular segment. And when somebody buys, a, let's say, a 700 euros mil mil scope and tries to shoot with it and does, I would say, tactical shooting, then most of them they upgrade to, to the premium class. In, in, a, in, a, in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, 
So the trend is that this scopes that more and more of new producers will come into this category with new products which will be more affordable. However, high quality premium scopes will probably stay on the level above 1,500 or 2,000 euros mm -hmm. or even 3,000 and, and above than, than the best go with, the, with their price. And we are at the end of our review, our uh, episode in this particular case. Uh, if you have any additional questions regarding the Mill Mill Tactical Rifle Scopes, feel free to write us an email, uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, don't forget to leave a comment below. Take care, until next time. Bye.